As the fateful promised day loomed over the new year, those who refused to become victims of an unknown destiny began preparations nice. to alter the outcome. Yeah, the end of the last Their episode was so hopeful, right? With the passage of time until spring was upon them. Okay, so there's Ready a time skip. Not, the promised day would soon arrive. Right, and the promised day is in spring. Episode 46, Looming Shadows. I love the way they phrase that, that they're not willing to be victims. That's a nice way of encapsulating a lot of the good feelings I get from the characters. For me, there are very few things that are as satisfying as watching characters rise to the challenge and be extra capable despite incredible adversity. That's a lot of sheep. Oh, yes, sir. It's our Risen Bowl Spring Sheep Festival. What do the sheep mean? Is this code? We just need to replenish our water. All right, unload the tanks. But what are they actually doing? What's really in the water tank? Doesn't look like anyone's home. We're here now, Miss Winry. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> yeah, I guess Winry's still under observation, right? She's still in danger. It looks like an auto mail bomb went off. Try not to touch the stuff in progress. I guess Panaco already relocated. It's gotten so dusty in here. <laughs> oh. Whoops. What the hell is going on up here? Wow, everyone's here. Everyone calm down. Lower your guns. Okay, Ed. Listen to Mr. Lion. What's going on here? I just wanted someplace private to eat my sandwich. Whatever, just put your guns down. Quit shouting at us. Will someone shut that dog up? They reunited a lot earlier than I thought they would. That's good. I was worried about you. Uh, yeah, I was worried about you too. I still have your earrings. I thought Al was with you. He's at the train station right now. He's with Miles. The train's gonna leave soon. You might be able to make it if you hurry. He looks taller. Hey, A lot wrong? taller. Don't you want to see him? Well, technically, I'm a fugitive right now. I can't risk anyone seeing me. That's right, I hadn't even considered that. By attacking Kimberly, I guess he attacked the military, which is a big no-no. <laughs> the next time you see your hometown, I hope that it's with the eyes of your original body. Yeah. Nice of him to care like that. I guess they've really become allies in this time. Poor Al. He seems so isolated. And now he doesn't have Winry. Winry? Oh, there she is. Welcome home. His auto mail's in serious need of maintenance, and I need him in peak condition. Give him a look-see after dinner. It is your fine craftsmanship after all. I'm not really comfortable tinkering with it. Respect. Lior's getting up and running again, huh? Good to hear. Did you tell him what Rose said? I feel like that would be great for him to hear. We ran into your father in Lior. He should be on his way to Central uh -oh. now. I think he's headed for some slum named Kanama. I want you to take Granny and Den and leave the country for a while. <laughs> The wrench continues. You can't just send us off like that. I know you want to protect us, but you need to try to save everyone. I'm going to do everything I can to stop it, but there's a chance it might not work. I don't want to hear any doubts from you. Please, Ed. You can't let them go through with this. Just tell me you're going to stop them and save the country. I want to hear you say that Oof, you're going to protect a lot the country of pressure. and then get your bodies back. Do whatever it takes to make that happen. I got to say, I'm enjoying like his new body. <laughs> that sounds wrong. I like that he's actually like an adult now. His physical state matches where we are in the story. About their conversation, Winry's placing a lot of pressure on him. I mean, he already has to be in a really crazy place thinking about his responsibility in the whole thing. There's so much on Ed's shoulders. So I feel like that was a lot that she just said. But he also made a mistake he frequently makes that Winry is very, very reactive to about trying to like brush her to the side and get her uninvolved. Like she's not, she's not the one. That's not her. Especially after everything we've seen from her and like the whole backs in the distance thing, right? And also that's her heritage, right? Like her parents were the people who didn't run away from the responsibility. And on some level, I think it's good for Ed to hear that even though I feel like he's not gonna like it now. This is sort of the cold hard truth. It's like you either do this or there's gonna be a lot of tragedy and that's all there is to it. Like there's no shying away from that reality. I just think the timing and the severity of that, I feel like if I'm Ed, I'm reacting really poorly to that. This isn't the time to start doubting yourself, Ed. Listen to me! Uh, Winry, you just don't know when to shut up, do you? Oh no, what? don't say that. She did go a little bit overboard, but that's not... That's not the mature response. He hasn't quite grown into his new body yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, she's a peach. Sounds like she wants everything. My kind of girl. 
That kind of wanting is dangerous. It's not how reality works. Take a look. This is what I got for wanting something unrealistic. I disagree. You want to bring back someone that you've lost. You might want money. Maybe you want women. Or you might want to protect the world. These are all common things people want. Things that their hearts desire. Greed may not be good, but it's not so bad either. You humans think greed is just for money and power, but everyone wants something they don't have. That's a really interesting point. This is something I've been thinking about the homunculi, and so it's cool to see him sort of articulate that. All these seven sins, they're all just points on a spectrum of things that are normal and often good. There's nothing wrong with desire, right? Like, desire is healthy. Desire is something that guides us towards things that are important for us. And desire can be one of the best motivating forces for, like, personal growth and development and, like, achievements and things like that. It's taken too far where you're doing things to an excess where it's hurting you or you're hurting others, or if it's based on some illusion. And the same can be true of the other sins as well, right? Like, there's nothing wrong with, like, sexual desire. It only becomes detrimental if it's not respected or if it's taken too far or pursued at great personal cost. You know, for sloth, rest is important, right? For wrath, Anger is useful. Anger is a useful tool in situations when you're in danger or when you need to make a stand for something, etc., etc. And so this is connected for me with the show's depiction of humanity. Father despises humanity and he only sees the worst of it. And the show has made it clear that those are real things. Like, those extremes are real and are, are terrible. And that humans are evil and terrible, but that's such an overly simplistic view of it. And there's a whole range of behaviors and attitudes and motivations, some of which are actually really pure and beautiful. And I don't think the show is using the seven deadly sins in a religious context necessarily. But if we look at it in that light, I believe that the seven deadly sins are sins because they lead you away from the path of God. So starting from there, but then like making it more general for the non-religious, what could that mean? And it could just mean avoiding behaviors that are not conducive for us living in a harmonious state that is somehow aligned with our being, with our existence. Like maybe in the show's terms, it could be something like natural law or natural order. And it could be that there are behaviors that short term are appealing, but long term are not sustainable or do not create greater harmony among human beings or are self-destructive ultimately, which the show is also big on, right? It's like things have real and serious and huge consequences, even the smallest of things. And so Greed is right. None of these things are bad in themselves necessarily. It's just a question of what is it connected to? What is the purpose behind it? And is it grounded in solid principles? Is it grounded in things that actually are beneficial to humanity and to ourselves as individuals? We were actually planning on leaving earlier today, and then we ran into you. It was good to see you. And thanks for the tune-up, Winry. Good, I'm glad that they got to reconcile a little bit. Ed, I need to- Lay low until the promise day passes. We're gonna stop them, Winry. And Al and I will be home before you know it. Good, Have he came around to what she was saying. Us, okay? <laughs> nice. It'll be a great day for apple pie. Yeah, I feel like he was just shocked at first with what she said, but I mean, ultimately, I think it's a good message if Ed is mature enough to take it. We're still waiting on Marco and Scar. Where the hell are they? And what's taking them so long? Oh, what the heck? Well, it's you guys. Yeah, the guys who you've kept here waiting. You want to tell us what took you so long? There's no time. <laughs> Damn it. I want to know. It's kind of funny when you think about it. We're former Amestrian soldiers, and here we are working with an Ishvalan dissident. Yeah, I know. We were born in Amestris, so it makes sense that we're trying to save it. I mean, our families are here. And while Scar has got every reason to hate this country, who'd have guessed an Ishvalan like him would be here fighting to save it right along with us? That's You're correct. all wrong. I'm not trying to save your country. I'm changing it. I want a mistress to acknowledge what it did to my people. And I want to make sure that it's incapable of ever doing so again. It is weird, right? But then again, it also, it isn't weird at all. I mean, it's only weird in the way we typically think of things. We're born into this world with no knowledge, and we can't have all the knowledge immediately, so we just have to take existing thought systems for granted for some time. And so there's sort of a gravitational force that that has where where you're born or what you grew up with is largely going to determine what you think and who you ally with. It's really difficult to go beyond that. It's really difficult to like put down boundaries and categorizations and just have like more foundational thoughts. But that's what's happened to these characters. They've been through all these experiences that kind of like force them to reevaluate their the boundaries in their minds of who's good and who's bad. As many of you probably know, I used to teach in China and I was planning on going to the graduation of the first class I ever taught there this past November, but because of COVID I couldn't go. And so I made them a video message to be played at their graduation. And one of the things I said, because I think about it a lot in regards to them is like, there are so many things, there are so many forces in the world specifically between the US and China, that are really divisive. And that is sort of weird for me having lived there and, and had such a good relationship with them because they are 
Chinese, right? Like they're Chinese nationals. And so that was a great experience for me because it forced me to put down the categories and the labels and just think about these students who I absolutely loved, right? These are really amazing kids who I had a great relationship with. What I always want to strive to do is put those things first, like put those individual relationships before any kind of like politicking or things I'm supposed to believe or sides or whatever, right? It's just me and them and I really care about them. And that to me is more powerful than any of like the divisive rhetoric that comes out. And this is not me like saying I love the Chinese government or the US government for that matter. It's just like, that is what I want to focus. That's where I want to place my energy is on those relationships. And I feel like that's what's happening with Scar. And I think that's sort of what makes it so appealing is that it's a deeper level. He's looking around him, really looking around him and seeing the individuals. And the individuals are the same as him and want the same things as him. So it stops being like Ishval Amestris and it becomes like, what do I want to do right now? Who do I want to be? And who do I care about? And to me, that's a better question. If you truly dream of changing the world, you must first be able to change yourself. Oh, that's a great line. The ebb and flow. It's a simple rule of life. There is fallen. But how? What took us so long? As you can see, we've been busy these past few months. These men have chosen to join us as our allies. Hell yeah, that's awesome. I look forward to this every year, General. Well, I'm just happy we're holding the drills on my turf for a change. Right, the drills. It's too cold up north for my men to have a fair fight. Very honest. They've placed one small stumbling stone in our path, though. Hmm. What do you mean, General? Well, it seems Bradley himself has come to observe the exercise. <laughs> He looks pretty surly, surlier than normal. I figured they would send someone to keep an eye on us. But I wasn't expecting this. Yeah, Bradley must have some feeling, right? He's very well connected. This can't be this tight a ship. He's got to have at least suspicions, if not direct knowledge of the plot. Poor Al. Still isolated. This is not good for him. Uh, not again. So it's been happening a lot. It's starting to happen more frequently. Yeah. And it's lasting longer each time. We have to hurry. This bond isn't gonna hold much longer. Big time limit. I smell him. That's him, all right. Wow, long I time to see. Full metal alchemist brother, the little armored boy. Not good. I can't fight him right now. Not in this condition. <sighs> What? And Pride is here? No, not now. Fight it out. Did they just capture Al? We'll wake you on the promise day. I hate you, Slim. No, don't touch that. Okay. I hate you, Salim, for misleading me for so long, <laughs> breaking my heart. Good evening. Mind if I intrude? Just don't expect me to offer tea or anything. No one expects that from you. <laughs> no one expects anything from you. I'm gonna have time to take you out to dinner soon. So you're going to follow through on your threat after all, huh? <laughs> threat. <laughs> he must have been saving up his money for the big dinner. I've got to say, your mansion is enormous. Very fitting for the Armstrong family. If you wanted to, you could hide an entire battalion in there. Is this a suggestion? You mean you don't plan on leaving it to your brother? If I had don't to go decide there. between the two of you, I'd rather you have it. Try not to take that as a compliment. <laughs> Nonetheless, I'm honored. <laughs> I know it's a little late, but congratulations on heading the Armstrong family. He's still getting rid of these flowers. I'm picturing his apartment just packed the gill with them. Salim Bradley is a homunculus. Oh, you didn't know? You're you're a little late. I've known that all along. They represent ladylike charm. Get off my property! <laughs> He's just happy to get rid of some flowers. The day before the promise day. Damn. Is the promise day going to be 15 episodes? Uh, sir. Hmm. General Hakaru is here. Who? Your Excellency. I've come here to give you a warning. General Grumman plans to... To use the Eastern forces to yeah. stage a coup? I've anticipated the general's next move. Of course. Actually, it's Bradley. the threat of a joint coup d'etat is just a decoy, sir. A distraction. Their plan was to draw Ooh. the bulk of the military's divisions and attention away from Central. Ishvalan terrorists are gathering to attack the city. Afterwards, 
General Grumman will invade Central face. under the pretense of stopping the terrorists. The General then plans to ally with Colonel Mustang amidst the chaos in order to take control of Central Command. You're getting a promotion, and then you're immediately dying in the Promised Day Sacrifice. But what they don't know is it's a triple fake-out. I wouldn't put it past them at all. Like, there's five layers of fake-outs. A large number of Ishvalans have been seen gathering in the slums outside of Central, so we have evidence to support General Hakuro's intelligence. Bradley seems to be losing it a little bit lately. Losing is cool. Prepare the train to depart for Central. I'm leaving you in command. Yes, sir. We should have known Mustang's treacherous. It wasn't enough to strip him of his pawns. We should have put him down in the first place. It's kind of true. I think part of Bradley likes having him around, or likes this whole thing going on. We've stopped. What's going on here? I've played this episode of Doctoria Chronicles. We don't have time for this. That's what the sheep were. Hey, the engine just started moving without us. It did what? What the hell? Hey, stop them! I mean, you, you trapped them, but you're not going to be able to kill Bradley like this, even if you blow up the train. We've safely cleared the sheep off the tracks. <laughs> they care about the sheep, that's so nice. You've been played for a fool, General. They set us up. It was a double fake out. They blew it up over a ravine. <gasps> <laughs> Good job, General Grumman. This is it. Everything goes down tomorrow. It's Damn, die now. this is insane. I'm glad the two of you have got my back. Hey, anything for you, Riza. Even if it does mean deserting. Oh, man. There's yeah, he's alive. Careers. I saw in the credits. <laughs> Once the dust has settled, we'll make sure the colonel answers for us. Here we go. It's all starting. Hell yeah, awesome. Yes. The cure is dead? He can't be dead. This has got to be a mistake. He's not We're dead. We're still waiting on confirmation that it's true. So have they even started searching yet? Last I heard, they haven't they even... They start panicking the moment they lose so their leader. Like chickens with their heads cut Joe off. Yelling. Unlike your soldiers at Briggs. This could be my chance. Oh, <laughs> it's a genuine honor to have you aboard. Whoa, us. he just makes an appearance like that? Calm down. Stop panicking. Oh no, he's gonna die now. I'm still here with you, and I'm watching over Central. Yeah, he's gonna end up in concrete now. That's how that goes. We don't do that here. We don't touch Olivia's shoulder. <laughs> Raven learned that the hard way. Am I understanding it correctly that she was about to take the throne there? That would have been awesome. But things are really going down now, and Father's not gonna let this opportunity slip. You can see everybody's sort of amped up. Everyone's more on edge this whole episode. Bradley is unusually sour. Winry and Ed are going through their things. Roy Mustang is staring passionately out the window. It feels so good that this is starting. The time skip seems like a good choice because it allows them time to make their plans. It also allows Ed to grow up. And it brings us right up to the day before the promise day, which is nuts. Is the promise day going to be the next episode? It's going to be the next couple episodes. It's got to be, right? There's such a mix of emotions because I'm so pumped for the next couple episodes and to see their plan go into motion and see them have what looks like a success against Bradley, even though obviously it's not. But also on the tragic side, you have Al. Like not only is he being pulled back into his body, but he's been captured and that is not good. That's a lot of power in father's hands. Overall, this episode felt really packed. Like there's just so much in there. A decent amount of action and a lot of really good character dynamics, character interplays. And it's extra satisfying just knowing all these characters, having seen the whole journey, right? One of my experiences character-wise that I'll never forget is how my appreciation and love of Miles grew. Not to say he's my favorite character or anything like that, but I think in terms of like, where my expectations started to where they ended, my appreciation for him grew in such a tremendous way. And I love his relationship with Scar. I think that's really well done. And speaking of Scar, I think his few short scenes were really amazing. And I love that he's been able to rally the Ishvalans and sort of see through the country boundaries and just to do what he feels is right. He feels so different now. He feels like he has a higher purpose that's not just rage-fueled. It's like he's thinking clearly. He has a purpose. His life has meaning. He's not just looking to die or like take people's lives. The whole episode's very satisfying. But that's the end of episode 46. I'll see you guys next time for The Promised Day, I think.